For too long, others have told my story. My story has been dissected, questioned, rewritten, and told on my behalf. But I am here today to tell you my story. My story is that my family and me fled from Iraq in 2003 after it was invaded. Our lives were turned upside down in a war that is still ongoing. I remember as a terrified 10-year-old crouching under the stairs with my mother and my sisters as bombs were being dropped all around us. Everything in the house would shake, feeling like an earthquake. Items would fall off the shelves and everything around me would shake and it would, f it would feel like we were going to be next. Houses in our, in, our streets were, in our street were bombed and we felt like we were going to be next to die. We fled in the middle of the night whilst there was a ceasefire. We left behind our valuables. Photos of my first day in school in my uniform that I was really excited about. Diaries and notebooks that I used to write stories and narratives in. We left behind friendships, family, and we left behind dreams of a future surrounded by those we love. Fast forward to adulthood in Australia, where I am now a community lawyer working to assist those in need. The welcome and the embrace that I received upon my arrival to an Australia has been essential to my ability to grow into the resilient, the powerful and the influential woman that I am today. Had I come to an Australia that was fearful and xenophobic against refugees, I wouldn't have the sense of confidence and the sense of belonging that I have now. Had I come to an Australia that was racist to ref towards refugees as we have today, I wouldn't be here before you as I am today. So after 15 years of being in Australia, I started to notice the narrative around how refugees are talked about change. It became a lot more negative. I started to see that politicians were being openly oppressive towards refugees. Politicians and opportunistic media were openly being xenophobic and racist towards us. They claimed that we were lazy. They claimed that we were dangerous and that we were to be feared. They proceeded to torture us, to imprison us and to, to pull us back to danger. As a young Australian of refugee background, I couldn't help but want to... I felt, um, I felt astigmatised and I felt like I didn't want to be associated with that refugee label because what those politicians said about me wasn't true. And the story that they created for me wasn't my story. And although Australia has never had a clean record when it came to oppression and to racialization, I know that I had come to an Australia that, had, that welcomes newcomers with open arms, an Australia that appreciates and protects diversity and multiculturalism. But I was witnessing a change in Australia. I was seeing an Australia that was falling for the fear of the other, and an Australia that was falling for the politics that was wanting to divide us based on colour. And whilst this was happening, people of refugee background and migrants were nowhere to be seen in the public eye. You know, you had politicians and journalists and advocates and academics given platforms to speak for us and to tell our stories, but we remained invisible. And do you know what that did? That actually created more fear and more confusion. Because if people knew that refugees were nothing to be afraid of, then surely they would be seeing us in public spaces and surely they would be hearing our stories from us. But instead, we remained invisible. We remain invisible. Instead of humanising us, our supporters were speaking for us, but hiding us at the same time. 
our allies were speaking for us and they were telling our stories whilst claiming that we didn't speak the language, we were scared, or that they had skills which we didn't. So my story and the story of others like me has once again been used to oppress us and to disempower us. I then decided to create the change that I wanted to see. I decided to reclaim the narrative and to tell my story as far and as wide as possible. Through the Meet FADAC project, I'm traveling all around Australia to tell my story with the aim of meeting every Australian so that I can reclaim the narrative and that I can finally humanize people seeking asylum, refugees and migrants. I'm putting myself out there in the public eye so that I can finally humanize my community and so that I can tell Australians that it was the welcome and the embrace that I felt on arrival that has led to the effective settlement of my family and me. And that sadly, we have lost this welcome. And when we lost this welcome, this has resulted in major changes in policy and in community attitudes. So although I started the Meet FADAC project only a few months ago, I've already kicked so many goals. I've met and reached tens of thousands of people all around the country. People who have come to my events have told me that hearing my story and hearing from me has increased their understanding and their knowledge about refugee rights and about the refugee experience. People have told me that their commitment to protecting refugee rights and to protecting Australia's diversity has immensely increased. I've had young people from migrant and refugee background tell me how telling my story has helped them come to terms with the stigma that we hear about refugees and about migrants, especially today. I've had teachers tell me that they've showcased my work to their classrooms and to their students, and that has given them a sense of belonging they didn't have before. I have had people who, have, who themselves have come to Australia as refugees or their parents have come to Australia as refugees thank me for shedding a light on Australia's real refugee stories. And all I did to create that change and to change the minds and hearts of those people was to tell my story in my own terms and in my own words. In all its happy moments, difficulties, my story has been effective in reaching people all over the nation and from all walks of life. I've been able to prove to Australians that it was the warm welcome that my family felt on arrival that has led for someone like me to be able to live out my values of helping people uh, access law and access justice. And throughout my legal career, I've helped people from all walks of life. I've helped people experiencing homelessness. I've worked with women and children experiencing family violence. I've worked with young people, older Australians and rural Australians, all to be able to access law and justice. As a young child, I grew up hearing stories from my grandmother. My, my sisters and my cousins and me would surround her while she told us stories that had values of home, of family and of loving your neighbours. When I was a child, I used to love writing stories. And when I came to Australia, I couldn't wait to learn English so I could write stories all over again. So I know that stories are powerful. And I know that for a long time, my story has been used against me and against people like me in that powerful way, but in the opposite direction. So I am now reclaiming that powerful weapon so that I can reverse the damage that has been done against refugee communities. Stories can also free us from fear. And I want to use my story to free the nation and to free the rest of the world from the fear and the falsehoods that people hear about refugees. 
But don't worry, my story doesn't just help refugees. So my story has evidently helped people of, of diverse and multicultural backgrounds. My story can show the leadership and the resilience of women. My story can show and prove that young people hold the key for effective change in our society. So the ripple effect of using storytelling to change narratives is never ending. Every single one of us in this room has a story so powerful that it can ch create change. It can, mend uh, it can mend community bonds and it can create peace and harmony where there was none before. From the young person who's struggling to stay true to themselves, the single mother working two or three jobs to make ends meet, the international student who is uh, working or living in Australia with great hopes and dreams awaiting them back home, or the newly arrived family who is longing to make Australia home. We all have a story. We have seen greats like Mandela, Gandhi, Rosie Batty create change with a single story, their story. Advocates for change everywhere have forgotten the power of stories and how they can humanise and empower people. We have forgotten that a single story can change the direction of history. We've seen mo successful movements like the environmentalists, the feminists uh, and the civil rights mov movements be led by people who are directly affected by these issues and tell their stories to create that change. So if we want children out of detention centres, we need young people of refugee background at the forefront of advocacy and change making. If we want humane policies for refugee communities and for migrant communities, we need those communities at the, at the table making the decisions on policy and legislation. For a long time, people have said that refugees are voiceless. But to that, I say that we are some of the bravest and most resilient people in the world. And all you need to do is to listen. You will then hear how loud we are and how loud we can be. For too long, others have told my story. But I am here before you today to finally reclaim it. Thank you.